Good evening, Shiloh. Good evening, guests and friends. Welcome to Midweek Service. Hello, Mama Sansu. How are you this evening? Good evening, Sister Lawanda. I'm doing just great. And welcome, everyone, to Midweek Service, where we can come together and get fueled up again by the Word of God. And with that said, let me ask you, are you standing in need of spiritual support today? Maybe spiritual guidance or counsel? We are here for you. If you have a prayer request, you can put your email address and your prayer request in our live chat. A deacon or a minister will reach out to you. Or if you prefer, you can go directly to our website and put your email address on the spiritual support form. And again, a deacon or a minister will reach out to you. We'll pray with you. We'll have counsel with you. And we'll stand with you in your hour of need. So listen, we are here for you. Just reach out and we'll reach out to you. Amen. We have some special announcements for you today. Listen, something exciting is going to happen on Saturday, June the 12th at 10 a.m. Our very own candidate in training for ministry, Brother Greg Brown, will be bringing his initial sermon. It will be at 10 a.m. via our live stream channel. Come out and support him and pray for him as we see the mighty move of God in his life and the beginning of his ministry. So remember, Saturday, June the 12th at 10 a.m., Brother Greg Brown will be bringing his initial sermon. Also, remember that on June the 14th at 5 p.m. will be your last opportunity to submit your Father's Day photos for our 2021 Father's Day presentation. Get those photos in so we can make sure that we have Dad represented in our presentation. Yes. On June 18th, we are celebrating our 2021 graduates. Woo! Congratulations, graduates, and shout out to everyone that has graduated for the class of 2021. Join us at Shiloh for our graduation drive-by at 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Shiloh, come and support our graduates. You don't want to miss it. We will be having our church-wide roll call on Saturday, June the 19th at 10 a.m. This is the opportunity where we can all come together as a church body and check in. So join us via Zoom for our church-wide roll call on Saturday, June the 19th at 10 a.m. We'll see you there. Shilo, it is offering time. We invite you to support our ministries here at Shiloh. The Bible tells us to give and it shall be given back to us, pressed down, shaken together and running over. If you would like to support our ministries here at Shiloh, here's how you can give. You can visit our website at shilohbc.org forward slash give. You can send a text to the number on the screen. You can mail your gifts to the address on the screen. Or you can stop by the church to drop off your love offering. Yes, Sister Lawanda, the Bible tells us that we should bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house. And prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there's not room enough to receive. So listen, that sounds like it's a promise. It sounds like a promise from God that if we do the things that we're supposed to do according to his word, he will do what he said he would do according to his word. So it's offering time. Let's get ready to give. After our offering, we will hear a brief message from our pastor, followed by a music selection, and then we will hear the preached word of God from a member of our very own ministerial staff. And hello once again, my dear brother, my dear sister. May the Lord continue to bless and keep each of you. Again, I've come to invite you to join us on this coming Sunday as we preach from the word, may the work I do be pleasing in God's sight. 
And in this message, may the work I do be pleasing in God's sight. From this message, I want to draw three points. The first point is, being a friend of Jesus means obeying his word. Point two, the Lord has chosen you. And thirdly, Jesus has ordained you to do work that will last. Sunday, 10 a.m. See you there. Be blessed and always, always remember to thank the Lord for his goodness. God bless you. Well, hello once again, my dear, dear Shiloh family. Shiloh, I'm coming to you at this time to again make this plea and to present some information to you con concerning this coronavirus vaccine. I pray that you, you and all of you have already been vaccinated. And yet, if you have not, I'm coming to ask you to make it your business to fortify yourself against this coronavirus. I know that there is absolutely nothing 100%, but the vaccination is a starting point and it will help us to get through this giant of ordeal. And so I pray that you would go and be vaccinated and join myself and your other Shiloh family members fortifying ourselves against this coronavirus to the best of our abilities at this time. Because I see this vaccine as a blessing from the Lord. And then the second thing I want to talk with you about concerning this vaccination is Shiloh, I'm trying, I'm doing the best I can to find a way to cause each of you to feel safe and secure to return to this house of prayer. I'm trying to find ways of securing an atmosphere where you can walk into and feel as though we have done everything we can do to protect ourselves from this virus, from cleaning the building, to ensuring that those who enter have taken the vaccination, has completed both vaccinations. And the only way I can think of to say to you, we want to open up the church once again in the future. But how do I say to you, everyone who's coming or those who are coming in are <clears throat> vaccination, have completed both shots, other than to find out from you because you're the one with the answers. And I know that some people will be bothered by any form of survey, but I'm here to tell you that I, I want to do this, Shiloh, 
for your safety and for your brothers and sisters' safety and to have a sense of safety. And so I'm going to probably in July or August either send out a, a survey or have individuals calling you asking if you have taken the, va the vaccine. If your answer is yes, it's yes. If it's no, it's no. Just that simple. This is going to be my way of pooling those numbers together and coming up with a percentage of Shiloh that has been fully vaccinated. And I pray, Shiloh, that you will join me and cheerfully participate in, rather it be a written um, survey or a verbal survey. We would ask you about yourself and the members in your household who belongs to Shiloh. And that's not to pride in your medical privacy, but it's just simply to ask you to join us in making sure people are feeling safe if and when they come back to Shiloh. So I'm putting this message out as a flag waving saying, hey, something is coming your way, Shiloh. And I'm praying that you would help me to help everyone in Shiloh by receiving the vaccination and receive this survey in whichever form it comes your way. Thank you so very much, Shiloh, for all your prayers and all your work for those who are constantly working to make Shiloh all that she can be. God bless you and let heaven continue to smile upon you. And whatever you do, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. God bless you, let heaven smile upon you and remember, if you have not taken the vaccination, please, please move forward in doing so for your sake and for the sake of your family members and all of us who will be in your presence and others. God bless you. Amen and amen. Stay on the back.
to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you and much appreciation to my pastor, Reverend B. Lewis Colleton, for this opportunity. This evening there is a word from the Lord. Let us pray. Father, I praise you for being a present help. Thank you for allowing us to be in the land of the living. Thank you for another opportunity to speak and do what thus saith the Lord. Father, let your word go forth. Let it touch, heal, and deliver as your will be done. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Our scripture for this evening is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. And it reads, And when you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, enter into your closet, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father which is in secret, and your Father which sees in secret shall reward you openly. This is the word of God. Our sermon this evening is titled, There is Power in the Secret Closet. There is power in the secret closet. Two points this evening. Point one, prayer is the key to a blessed life. And point two, you need to go in your closet. This evening, we will speak about the power in the secret closet. Some of you might say, Reverend Turner, I don't have a secret closet. I would have to disagree with you. Every one of us in the land of the living has a secret closet. I know you will say we have shoe closets and coat closets and storage closets, but where is my secret closet? I'm not talking about that closet that you see in horror movies with bats and mold and decapitated bodies. I'm not talking about that closet where you throw everything you don't want to be bothered with in and at the same time don't want to get rid of anything. No, where is your secret closet? And someone might say, well, since you know so much, Reverend Turner, what is your definition of a secret closet? Well, I'm glad you asked. A regular closet is an enclosed space with a door, a fitted space built into the walls of your house. Could be in your bedroom, your den. However, that secret closet, that place that separates you from the world, in all honesty, it is the habit of shutting yourself in God. It's the habit of seeking God. It's the habit of calling on God. It's that place I can go whether I'm in my car or my job, but especially when I am home, wherever I am, when I want to shut out the world and all that dwell within and just spend time with the Lord. There are benefits in the secret closet, but more importantly, there is power in the secret closet. In chapter six, the Sermon on the Mount continues with teachings about giving prayer, fasting, money, and worry. God wants us to live in humble sincerity, trying to please him rather than living for the approval of others. Our giving, praying, and fasting should all be done in secret, not to impress people, because God hates hypocrisy even more than we do. Point one, prayer is the key to a blessed life. Through prayer, God makes himself available to us at all times. Whatever you're going through, God wants to hear about it and he wants to help you with it. If you don't know how to pray, then it could seem confusing, but all it is is talking to God. Just like you talk to your friends or tell your family what's going on in your life, that's a simple way to pray to God. 
He wants to have a relationship with us and is eager to start that with us. Have you ever wondered, how do I pray? Am I doing this right? Or can God even hear me? Well, prayer is a powerful thing, and God can do miracles when we have faith that he will do what we cannot. Brothers and sisters, please believe you are not alone. Whatever life has thrown your way, you do not have to face it alone. Whether you're wanting to pray for family or pray for guidance in your own life, prayer is a way to find peace. You can cast your cares on Jesus and rest in him through all that you're facing because God hears your pleas. The Gospel of Luke has been called the Gospel of Prayer because the other Gospels describe what they witness and experience. Luke's experiences never wavered, never were off the mark. His response was always constant of one thing. For example, the Gospels say, Jesus in the Jordan when spirit descended like a dove. Luke says, it was while he was praying that the spirit descended. The Gospels say Jesus chose 12 apostles. Luke says it was after he spent a night in prayer that he chose them. Other Gospels say that Jesus died on a cross. Luke says that while he was dying, Jesus was praying for his enemies. Other Gospels go on to say Jesus went on a mountain and he was transfigured. Luke said it was while he was praying that he was transfigured. So shallow as you can see from these examples, prayer is the key to a blessed life. When you sincerely pray to the Lord, your life will be changed as well as your perspective of who God is in your life. I don't know anyone that has prayed to the Lord and remained the same. It's almost impossible when you pray sincerely and honestly. Remember, God knows what you need before you even ask. He knows when you're being straight with him because he is with you no matter where you are. If you're praying selfishly, he knows. If you're praying to put on airs, he knows. When you don't know how to pray or what to pray for, he knows. When you don't have the words, relax. He knows and he listens to your heart. You see, we serve an all-wise, all-knowing God. Isaiah in chapter 6 was praying when he saw a vision that changed his life. Imagine how overwhelming it must be to experience the holiness of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul was praying when he was caught up to the third heaven and saw unspeakable things. His life was changed. In Revelations 1 and 10, the Apostle John was praying on Patmos when he heard a great voice say, come up here, and he received the book of Revelation. Romans 8, 18 and 19 says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Blessed is the name of the Lord. In other words, our position as children of God helps us live with expectation of the glory that waits for us. For all our earthly trials are but a moment in eternity. Therefore, we can live with joy and hope, knowing that nothing can separate us from God's love. And that's good news. We should also see ourselves as God sees us. For through prayer, we are changed. Prayer will also change our views of others. Prayer is the key to a blessed life. You know, sometimes we allow trials and tribulations to get us down, even though the Lord said we would have trials and tribulations. The beauty is that he did not just drop this statement and then left us. No, he said he would never leave us or forsake us. He said, cast all your cares on me. He said, ask and you shall receive. I am an alpha and omega. He says, I am the beginning and the end. No man, he said, no man comes to the Father but by me. These are not cliches or comfortable witty sound bites. No, this is the King of kings, Lord of lords, the Almighty God speaking directly to us. So why are we walking around with the weight of the world on our shoulders as though we don't have a way out? We go to our best friend, they can't help us because they have problems of their own that they can't work out. And after talking to them for about three minutes, we realize our situation really isn't that bad after all. How can they help us when they can't help themselves? 
It's not that they don't want to help us or that they're not concerned about us. They're just not able to focus on us right now. We won't consider therapy because then people would think we're crazy. Well, we probably are, but that's okay because I know a man named Jesus who can speak to crazy and tell it to flee and it must flee. You see, there is no choice in the matter. We won't go to a doctor because all the doctor wants to do is either remove something surgically that God has non-surgically positioned in these bodies or he has a pill on standby just in case. Well, brothers and sisters, in all of these situations, God is able. Prayer is the answer. We serve an awesome God that is always with us. There's not a problem that he can't solve. Prayer is the key to a blessed life, and you will discover there's power in the secret closet. What I love about the Lord is that he is always teaching us. He tells us not to pray to be seen. Some people may take offense to this, but this is the Almighty speaking. Many have beautiful voices. They're very articulate. They enunciate effectively, well-educated, more degrees than most. But verse five tells us, and when you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You see, God hates hypocrisy more than we do. And God wants us to be real with him as he is with us. When we're in a crisis, when the doctors have looked at us and then walked away, when we don't have money to pay our bills, we need to have a relationship with God that is so tight, even air can't get through. This is when you discover the power in the secret closet. Point two, you need to go in your but you, when you pray, enter into your closet, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father which is in secret, and your Father which sees in secret shall reward you openly. There's nothing more powerful in life than prayer, and we should begin every single day with prayer because it brings us peace. The songwriter says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We have so many demands placed on us these days that we often take care of the urgent or more demanding rather than the needful. But through prayer, our souls are cleansed. Through prayer, our spiritual nature is satisfied. And through prayer, our uh, thirst is quenched. God of the high heavens feeds our starving souls. God's word is true. If he said it, I believe it. That's it, and that's all. Nothing controls the present and the future like prayer, and our Bibles are filled with examples. Peter was set free from prison in answer to prayer. Daniel's prayer prevailed for the captive Jews. Abraham prayed for Lot in Sodom. Samuel prayed for the Israelites when they were invaded. You see, God is true to his word. The power in the secret closet will result in future rewards. God said he would reward us openly. There will be a reward for all prayers prayed secretly to God. You see, the power of the secret closet is power over confusion, power over disorder in your life, power in your family, power on your job, and power in your church. The power of the secret closet is divine protection. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You need to go in your closet. In my secret closet, I can cry to him. I can hear him. I can listen to him. He knows me. He knows my heart. He knows my name. I can tell him all my troubles and concerns. I can tell him the things that worry me. I can tell him the things that I cannot tell another person. I can be real with God and he can be real with me you need to go in your closet. There are times in my secret closet when I have absolutely nothing to say. I just enjoy being in his presence. You need to go in your closet. You see, there are times when we have to stop talking and just be quiet. I used to play a game with my children, especially during the times when they were just being too busy, just in everything. 
And the beauty of children is that they are very competitive in their own right. So I would have them play. Let's see who can be the quiet, who can be quiet the longest. They loved it. They would try their best to be quiet and it worked like a charm. However, I can tell you from that game, I have one child that would talk to just about anybody and everybody. And the other one is so quiet, some actually believe he can't talk. They're both blessings beyond measure in their own right. But to my point, sometimes you just need to go in your closet. Sometimes you have to steal away and cast all your cares on the great I am. You need to go in your closet because it is in your secret closet that you develop a relationship with God. You get to know him for yourself, by yourself. You see, he neither sleeps nor slumbers. You don't need an appointment. He is always available. When was the last time you offered up strong crying and tears to the Lord? Some of us have a take it or leave it attitude toward prayer, but God is faithful to perform his word. If we ask, he will answer. If we pray according to this will, his will, he will move on our behalf. When was the last time you were in a situation so bad that only a risen Savior could help you? Prayer has the ability to change anything or anyone. The more you pray, the more joy and excitement you will experience. There is power in the secret closet, and it's good to have a secret but powerful relationship with God. You want that job? Go in your closet. You want a healing? Go in your closet. You want a friend that sticks closer than a brother? Go in your closet. There is power in the secret closet. There is power in the name Jesus. Prayer is the key to a blessed life. You need to go in your secret closet. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We pray right now that your word will prick the hearts of these, your children. We pray, Lord God, that it will reach down into their very being and become to life in you. Father, we ask that you reach out to the saved, the unsaved, and the holy, homeless, for we know you are the risen Savior. We know you are the answer. And so I ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you have been blessed by this powerful message. Apply God's word to your life so it can be a blessing to you, your friends, and your family. And as the scripture says, put your trust in God because he cares for you. Now, you have the opportunity to bless this preacher and this church with your offerings. Just go to shilohbc.org forward slash give or send a text to the number on the screen. Or you can mail your offering in to the church or stop by the church to drop it off. Just remember, God loves a cheer for giver. Join us each Sunday for Sunday school and Sunday worship service. Then join us Wednesday for midweek service and Wednesday night Bible study. Here at Shiloh, we are a Bible preaching, Bible teaching church with a focus on saving souls. Until we meet again, always be blessed.